Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's test all started with me wanting the one answer. So if you ever know, want to know why did you ever start dyno testing and doing all the dyno mule testing, it all started because I wanted an answer to this one question, and that's this. Does having a clover leaf in an intake manifold make more or less power than if you remove that clover leaf manifold? I have dyno results today that I'm going to share with you because I did this test just to see. So I'm going to give you a little background to this. Probably maybe at the very beginning of my YouTube thing, maybe two years ago, two and a half, something like that, I had uh, posted up some you know videos and whatnot, and there was a Ford manifold, and it had a huge clover leaf, a big one. And I'm grinding this out for the customer, and I have to admit the only real reason why I've done it is because kind of monkey see, monkey do sort of thing. And I'd never done a back-to-back -back test or done it, seen anybody even do that where they took out the clover leaf like this to see if it any, made any more power. So at the time, the only one I knew on YouTube that was actually doing any testing was Richard Holdner. And so I'd hit him up and I'm like, hey man. And he was gracious. Dude's, dude's a really nice guy. Uh, a lot of his videos are, are about magazines, um, dyno tests that he'd done for magazines back in the day, but he still does current ones where there's certain changes now. So anyway, I hit him up and he was gracious enough to contact me back and he says, man, I'll tell you, I don't really have anything in the pipeline that we can do right now to test that. But I mean, if, if something comes up, I, you know, he kind of let me know sort of thing. And so, which was, I totally understood, but I was like, you know what, if you want to test this stuff, so as I'm grinding for hours on end and here in the grinding room, porting heads for people, I was like, if you know, if I want to get this testing done that I want to see done, probably ought to do it myself which is a lesson to you guys too. If you want to find out any information, don't wait for someone else, do it yourself. So that's what I did. That's how I, the 406 got built was to test this one thing. So what we have here is an Edelbrock Super Victor. Now this is for a small block Chevy, I know, but this Cloverleaf thing is not a small block Chevy thing. This is, I see Cloverleafs in small block Fords quite a bit. I see them in the big block Chevys. Um, I see them even in LSs come to think of it. So the real question is, does doing that versus this make any difference? So again, this is a Super Victor. It's made for a Dominator flange. So this is a Dominator one. I'd actually tested in a previous video, um, a 4150 style that had a clover leaf in it and I removed it and I've shared those videos. It was from the AFR um, intake manifold that it has or Eliminator one or whatever. I forgot the exact name that it's called, but I tested that. But this one I thought will be a difference, a bigger difference for the record, on the 4150 with the AFR, once the clover leaf was removed, it actually lost power. But the one most of the time I usually take off the clover leaf for is this. And I have to admit, like I said, um, a lot. The only reason why I started even removing this because it was kind of like monkey see, monkey do. You know, someone else is doing it. It seems like it makes sense. Uh, this should make more power, even though I'd never done a direct dyno comparison. So. The engine itself that these this went on to test, and I want to say this one's just here for demonstration purposes so you can see what the clover leaf looks like before, and this is what it looks like now. The manifold that was tested was this exact one on both of them. So it's a 406 small block Chevy, 11.2 compression ratio, Promax Project X 215cc heads completely stock, solid roller camshaft, 260, 270 duration, 685 lift on both, 108 lobe separation that came from Urson. I mean, this is your basic run-of-the-mill thing. It had a 1050 uh, Dominator on top from Holly. It's just an out-of-the-box thing. I had to jet it down a little bit. It did have a one-inch spacer on it that was a tapered four-hole. So before and after, both times had that. And simply went from this to this. And I'm going to tell you, the way I did it, I didn't do it, grind it by hand. I put it up in the mill and used the mill just to cut across on each of the four corners. And then... If you do that, it leaves a kind of a ledge here. So you have to blend it in, which is what's been done. Not, not trying to open up the ports at all to make them any larger. Just trying to really roll that corner in where the mill leaves the sharp edge. That's it. I did do the dividers, and I know you're thinking, well, that's got to be worth something. No, because in a previous test with a Victor Jr., I did this rounding on the dividers and did absolutely nothing. So, but anyway, that's it. So you can see what it looks like. And went from that to this. Put in the comments right now how much power you think it made a difference of. So I'm sure you keyboard warriors out there right now are tip, 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 tapping around. And I'd love to hear it. But I have to say of all the tests I've done and the whole reason to even start doing dyno testing was this, the results are pretty much disappointing. 
So let's just cut to the chase and get to it. There's your results. You're like, what am I looking at? This is an overlay, so you can get a better idea. That red line, it's with the clover leaf removed. So in all fairness on the, and I even though I covered it up with this, but it doesn't really make a difference. But we went from 4,000 to 7,000. Didn't do it whenever it didn't have the clover, when it did have the clover leaf in there. But the red line is with the clover leaf removed, the black line stock. By the way, all this results are in a book you can purchase on my website, wengines.com. There's a link to my online store. You can purchase this book. I think this one's book five. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, book five. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty disappointing. If you notice and you're looking at it, you're like, what am I looking at? It didn't change a thing hardly at all. So the, the engine making some pretty good steam, 621 horsepower. But if you're looking at the two results, you can't really tell which one's which. They're tracking each other so closely. Now you're like, well, no, oh, right here, it makes more. This is more about how you load the dyno. So that little jerk there at the beginning, you can do that the way you load a dyno. Really, this is, I would say from here on, it's honest. This is just jerking the dyno when you load it. I could probably make a video on that, but I'm not even gonna bother. But anyway, look how close. They don't really alter. I should have probably pulled it down here to see if it did anything, but we, I didn't do any of the low RPM testing back then, so I think we started at 47 and went on, but now we're, I think we, some of the tests were at 38, but 4,000 is about it. Maybe it would have showed something up here, but it, from 4,800 on, it didn't show anything. So, I, I mean, it didn't even vary. Looking at the raw numbers, it's like one horsepower difference, if that. And I'm talking like 0.8, and that could be a variance in anything. So the difference is so small, I can't say it did anything, anything. Now, don't take this as an absolute though, because if you look at the engine itself, this is a pretty healthy one at 620 horsepower, but let's say you had an engine that made 700 or 800, and beyond that, what if we were going more RPM, 7,000, 8,000? We may actually finally see a difference, and maybe it'd be a much more noticeable difference. So don't take this as an absolute. But I'd say this engine probably applies to more people than the people that are turning the farther, higher RPM stuff. For those in this range, it definitely didn't hurt doing this, but it also didn't gain, which I know is some of you are like, that surely is worth something. I mean, look at this. It just wasn't. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes what you think makes a huge difference doesn't do anything. And this just happens to be, on this combination, worth absolutely nothing. But now I know. Which means now you know. So there's a whole scoop of it. Does the cloverleaf make any more power? Not on this combination. And maybe in future testing on an engine that makes more power as the 540 big block dynamo gets built. Maybe I could test that on that because that, that one will probably, in the upper 800s, maybe crack 900. So maybe that in that case... It will show a difference, but not on this 406 small block Chevy. At least it just didn't. So, anyway, uh, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, I'm no Superman. I don't port cast iron. No, I don't know who ports cast iron. And you guys take care.